Blair, quite a remarkable man in this generation. Oh yes, he is, and an honor to have him here in um, the Metropolitan Church, the Rock Cathedral, actually. Mr. President, Pastor Paul, immensely distinguished array of bishops and public servants and all protocols observed. Um, <laughs> Uh, wow, uh, this rock cathedral, uh, it's quite an extraordinary achievement. Congratulations, what a magnificent tribute to the positive force of faith. Now that's someone's mobile phone, but it's not mine. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Thank you. And I could tell, by the way, in that beginning introduction that Pastor Paul was making when you were responding to what he was saying, I hope this roof is well reinforced because I think he must <laughs> lift it off from time to time. <laughs> I can't imagine any such creation other than here in Nigeria. And it's a great tribute to all of you and to the country. So this, this centre is founded with the mission of social justice and national transformation. And it's a noble ambition for a noble nation, Nigeria. Nigeria, with its history and its culture, the beauty of its landscape, the spirit of its people, rich in potential but as you know and as Pastor Paul just reminded us too many people still poor so what does it take to accomplish national transformation well it needs obviously which is why it's so fantastic you Mr. President are here it needs government that is effective in creating prosperity for the people in getting things done I've often said to Mr. President, the hardest thing I found when I was Prime Minister, you see, when I was Prime Minister, I thought having been made Prime Minister, I must be a powerful person. Right. I thought I must be, apart from the Queen, the most powerful. Right. But I learned the difference between sitting in Downing Street and having an idea and translating the idea into reality. Right. That's the tough thing. <laughs> So, whether it's electricity and power so important for the country, the construction of new power plants or roads and rail, ports, this wonderful Saving One Million Lives program, helping to eradicate polio, provide better maternity services for the people, or whether it's providing jobs and opportunity, the tough thing is always making it happen getting it done, turning it into reality. I was astonished when I learned that the median age, average age of Nigerians is just 18 or 19. And almost half the population under the age of 15. So the challenge is great because these young people are the future. If they succeed, the country succeeds. But it's tough to help them to succeed because they need jobs and they need hope and they need opportunity. They need to know that if they work hard, they can do well. They need to know that if by their own merit they achieve, that achievement will be recognized. But the good news is that the will is there. And as we know, where there is a will, there is a way. And Mr. President, I wish you and your team well. As the Holy Book says, be strong and of good courage. We wish you every success in all your endeavors. So national transformation requires, beyond doubt, things happening, things moving, a sense of the country going forward. It also needs basic safety and security. 
This is the first duty of any government and the absolute foundation of any society. The strong communities flourish when people feel a sense of freedom. And people feel a sense of freedom when they feel a sense of safety. And violence is always the enemy of progress. No religious belief can ever justify it. No political cause should sustain it. No personal grievance will ever be redressed by it. Deliberately to harm the innocent is not just a crime. It is an abomination in the sight of God. So we need our communities to be and to feel safe. That is also part of national transformation. And to achieve that we also need what Pastor Paul has spoken so eloquently about, which is religious reconciliation based on peace and on mutual respect. Because good-hearted people of all faiths should come together to drive extremism out of our midst, to root out the perversion of proper faith and replace it with a purpose in line with God's purpose which is harmony and decent living and a society based on trust and respect.